Hi guys, and welcome to this, our first lesson in Leaving Cert High Level Maths um, Sequences and Series. So in the next couple of lessons, we're going to take a look at exactly what sequences and series are and the different types of sequences and series that are required in the Leaving Cert High Level Maths course. So in the notes, I'm going to begin today on page four, uh, just by looking at the, the terminology involved that we're going to be using over the next um, couple of lessons. So page four of your notes um, looks like this. So the, some of the key definitions here, that first of all, uh, what we mean by a sequence, so a sequence is an ordered list of numbers. So it's an ordered list of numbers, okay? The numbers are given in a particular order, right? And the key thing about a sequence is, uh, they're also known as progression, but it's a list of numbers where there's a pattern of some kind, okay? So there must be some kind of a pattern there that would allow you to work out what the next number is, okay? So a set of ordered numbers that follow a particular pattern, um, so you'd be able to extend the sequence if you knew what the first couple of terms were. And they're also known as progressions. Okay, now the Levy Cert Examiner will use the term sequence, um, but sequence and progressions mean the same thing. It's worth pointing out just a couple of different um, terms that are uh, worth flagging with you here. Repetition is allowed. So it's, it's possible that you may have the same number on the, on, the, on the list more than once. All right? And sequences can be either finite or infinite. So a finite sequence is one that contains a fixed number of terms. In other words, the, the, the sequence has a final term where the sequence ends. So maybe you've got a list of numbers that looks like that. Maybe you've got 1, uh, 3, 4, 8, 12. And the sequence stops there. All right? So it doesn't go any further. So, so there's a final term here. That sequence consists of five terms. And there's a final one there where the sequence ends. There's no numbers beyond the number 12. All right, so if, for example, um, so if you look at the, the second one, the infinite, it contains an infinite number of terms where it goes on forever. Okay, that there is no final term, the sequence never ends. So a finite sequence is a list of numbers that has, there, there's a pick, particular number of numbers in the list, and then the list ends, there are no more. An infinite sequence is one where there's no end to the list. The numbers go on forever, all right? And sequences are monotonically increasing if every term of the sequence is bigger than the one before it, or monotonically decreasing if every term is less than the one before it. So a sequence can be monotonically increasing or decreasing, and um, numbers going up or numbers going down. You'll kind of see examples of that now in a moment. But the key thing to, to pull out there is that a sequence is just an ordered list of numbers where the number, it's a list of numbers given a particular order where there's some kind of a pattern that would allow you to work out what the, the next number in the sequence is, and that they can either be finite, where there's a fixed number of terms after which the list ends, or infinite, where there's no end to the list of terms. They're the most important things to be familiar with. They're the most important terms you'll see mentioned in the kind of quests we're going to work with now on sequence and series, right? And there are three ways to define a sequence, right? At, what you can do first is a list at least three terms. So if you're going to list a sequence, you have to give at least three terms. If I told you a sequence looks like this, say that we've got this sequence here, two, four, and I stop there. There's really no way for you to work out what the next number is, right? So for example, you might say the next number is six, because obviously what we're doing there is adding two each time. So we add two, add two to get the numbers of this here. That's the pattern, okay? Or you could say it's eight. We're multiplying by two each time. So two by four is two, uh, sorry, two by two is four. Four by two is eight. So when I'm only given two numbers, that's not unique. So I need to give at least three terms here so you can see what the pattern is to, to extend it. So if you're going to, to, to define a sequence by listing terms, you must give at least three. Otherwise, the sequence is, um, is not unique, all right? So for example, the sequence of, of even natural numbers, you can see it's two, four, six, okay? And it goes eight, 10, 12, obviously beyond that, but I need to list at least three. A better way of doing that is to write what's called the general term, or the, the, which is TN, or the nth term, okay? Essentially what that is, it's a formula, as you can see down below here, it's a formula containing N that allows you to calculate the nth term of a sequence. Right? So it's a little formula that allows you to work out what each number in the sequence is. It's a formula that if you put n equal to 1 in the formula, it will tell you what the first number is. n equal to 2 will tell you what the second formula is. n equal to 3 will tell you what the third number is, and so on. It's a formula that lets you work out what each number on the list is. Now, you'll spend a lot of time when you're dealing with um, sequence series working with tn. Because it allows me to jump to a particular number in the sequence without having to write out all the ones that precede it. Okay, so for example, for the natural numbers, the general term tn is 2n. You can see if I put n equal to 1 in there, I get 2 times 1, which is 2. That is the first number in the sequence. Okay, if I put n equal to 2 in there, okay, 2 twos are 4, I get number 2 on the list. 
when I leave to three in there, I get six, number three of this, and so on. So the general term for the, the, the even numbers is 2n. Or finally, and we don't use this very often, believe it or not, you can write a, a recursive relation. So a recursive relation is essentially where you give the first term of a formula, and then some kind of a formula that lets you use that first term to find the ones that follow it. I'll do an example of that kind of shortly, which will show you what that means. But they're the three kind of ways of defining a term. Really, for leaving search, you're going to focus on these two here, and the top one's the best. The general term, Tn, a formula containing n that allows you to calculate the nth term of the sequence. Okay? And the general term is represented by either Tn, usually Tn for leaving search, but it can also be called Un. They mean the same thing. Tn and Un are the general terms of the sequence. Okay? So on page five, then, here's the important bit. Okay, the three types of sequence that we have to look at for leaving search. Okay, so for leaving search, there's three different types of sequence on, um, that we should be familiar with. Okay, there are arithmetic sequences and patterns. They're also known as linear patterns. And they're the easiest of the three, as we'll have a look at. We're going to look at those first, arithmetic sequences of patterns. You then have quadratic ones. And then you have the, the, the most important ones for leaving search, the geometric ones, which are also known as exponential patterns. So arithmetic quadratic and geometric are the three types of sequence we should be familiar with. So for each of them, we're going to have a look at how you find Tn and how you work with sequences of that type. And then a series is just slightly different, okay? So when you're dealing with sequences and series, a series is just very slightly different. It's the sum of the terms of a sequence. So just really what that means is if you take a sequence and add the numbers together, you get a series. So for example, if you've got a, se a sequence of numbers that looks like this, so let's say the sequence is 1, 3, 5, seven, nine, that's a sequence. It's just a list of numbers in a particular order. You can see there's a pattern there, where obviously we're dealing with the odd numbers, and we're just adding two each time. So the next number would be 11, and then 13, and so on. That's a sequence. If you add the numbers together, one plus three, plus five, plus seven, plus nine, and so on, that's a series. Okay, so a sequence is just a list of numbers, okay, separated by commas. A series is what you get when you take those numbers and add them together. All right, and um, they're very often the, the, um, the when you're dealing with a sum. Remember, when you're adding things together, that's very often represented using that sigma symbol. So, remember that symbol sigma, the Greek letter sigma. Remember that the um, sigma is the the capital. In this case, that's the capital Greek letter S. S for sum. All right, so that sigma notation is very often used for this. So you, you'll see a M series written this way. Okay, so you see we've got term one all the way up to term k like that. It's the sum of Tn from 1 up to k. In other words, if you put the number 1 in here, and then number 2, and so on, so with what that notation there means, if you put the number 1 in here, and then put the number 2 in, and keep going to get to that number there, and add them all together, that's what the, sum no, um, the, the sigma notation indicates, and we'll have a look at that um, in shortly. But the key thing to take off that page there is the three types of sequence that are in the Emissary course, and what a series is, it's just when you take the, the numbers that make up a sequence, and add them all together, that's a series. Okay, and various notations. So we're going to be looking at in the next couple of lessons at what that looks like.